Hi, and welcome to another little short episode, an unboxing episode of Gun Talk with Carrie. Jim got a phone call this morning, and look what came in. This is his Springfield Armory Hellcat. It's a little nine millimeter, and we're unboxing it for you today, and later on, we're gonna go ahead and take it to the range. This is what you get. It does come in a nice cardboard box, but it also has a nice fancy little pouch for you to carry it in. There it is. Now the pouch also has a little pocket in it for your extra magazine. And it is actually has a little kind of a fuzzy texture in it. So it won't just slip right out. Okay. I have never held this before. I was not with him when he purchased it. Um, and I haven't fired one either. Uh, it does come with a 13 round magazine and also an 11 round, which I'll show you in a little bit. It feels very nice in my hands. The, the grip texture is not too bad. Uh, he is planning on, after we shoot it today, putting these Handle It, Handle It custom gun grips on it just to see if he likes it or not. And it's got these cool little... Because it looks cool and it's got the Hellcat symbol. Yeah, the Hellcat symbol and it's got the little green things that go in there to look pretty cool. He wants it to look cool. Anyway, let's see. Okay, now I'm looking at the sights right now. The sights look really good. There's a bright red front sight, and then the back sight is just a U shape, which helps you put that. Trying to see. Put that front sight right in there, and it's also the back sight is all the way up to the back of the slide so it's utilizing the entire length of the gun um let's see what the trigger feels like not bad reset it's pretty far out there there it is right there so if you're used to a shorter reset, you would have to get used to that on this one. Keep in mind, this is for concealed carry. It is very concealable. Uh, one thing um, that I should mention is that when you have the slide back, oh wow, I could get it to work. There we go. But I can't, it's not real consistent. So if you're thinking about using this for any kind of competing, IDPA or ASI, you're gonna have to do the racking of the slide motion because this is not very easy for me to push. Uh, let's see, what else can we say? Oh, I was gonna mention on the grips, I did notice that it has a little grippy right here along the frame, and I can actually fit my thumb there, and I can feel the grip. And that's not normal for me with my small hands. So that's a nice thing. I'll be able to control that very nicely on the range. Uh, let's see. One thing that you need to always look for when you are um, purchasing a gun, and especially if you compete, is to have that magazine drop easily and not get caught up to where you actually have to pull it out. Same thing if you were carrying it concealed, just in case you have to switch those magazines fast, you don't want to be fumbling trying to get that magazine out. Um, it's a good thing that you check this in the store when you're just looking around over the counter. If you don't feel comfortable actually dropping it like this, you can always just turn the gun over and just pop it. And if it pops up, 
boop, like that, that's a very good spring in there to pop that up. But if it just kind of does this, yeah, you don't want it. There was a, um, a, a gun, it was a $1,600 gun that we looked at in a store, and oh, the slide was smooth as glass. It was a beautiful gun, but we did this, and it basically did that. It did not pop at all, and you actually stuck, had to pull it out. That was a definite game changer on that gun. Um, let's see. It does have a loaded chamber indicator right here. Oh, I didn't do my disclaimer. All the gun here is, there's nothing in it. Totally empty, nothing in the magazines. We just unboxed it so it wouldn't have any um, ammo in it or anything. And there's none in the room. So um, this, if there was a round in there, it, you could be, you could see the actual um, brass through the hole there. And let's see, let's see what else is in this box here. Besides your little pouch, you get a wonderful join the NRA little card and a nice little envelope with your instructions. Ooh, well, Jimmy, sticker. That goes on the safe. Oh yeah. Okay, then we get your operations manual. Telling you how to hold it, how to load it, how to do everything that you would need to know. Uh, let's see, your warranty card and warranty information. And up oh, if they, if you want to get a laser, they're giving you a 50% off a Viridian red laser. If you want to do that, want to go that route. We're not really excited about lasers. For us, it's more of a deterrent um, to have a laser pointed on the intruder's body to make him see, uh-oh. Uh, to me, a laser is distracting to shoot with because you're watching that beam and you're breathing and you're moving and the beam is going like this too and that's, to me, that's way too distracting. I have to aim and shoot like that. Okay, what else do we have in here? Little box opens up. We've got, oh yes, this. Oh, it does have a little cleany thing in here. I'm going to take that cleany thing out. This is for your barrel. This is what you're going to use to clean the inside of the barrel to get all the yucky stuff out after you've sprayed it with gun stuff. And they have the wonderful uh, Springfield logo for your lock that we don't use. Yep, in the garbage. Okay. We use safes. We would rather have her not have to say, just a minute, Mr. Bad Guy, I need to unlock my gun so that I can shoot you. Okay, here we go. This is your little 11 round magazine compared to the 13. It's just a little bit shorter. And um, they also give you a fat base plate so that if this isn't concealable enough for you, if you're wearing some kind of garment or whatever, you can pop this off. And I'm pretty sure the directions will tell you how to do it and just replace it with this one and it'll leave you even more of a flesh concealable there you go. There's a picture of it right there. So that's what it would look like with this flat base plate on it. And they're really easy to take apart and put back on. Anyway, I think um, that's about it on this. Um, we're going to be really curious to see how the reloads, um, since we reload here, um, make our own ammunition, how well they go through this gun. Uh, we'll find that out today when we take it to the range. And I think I've covered everything. Well, let's hit the range. Yeah. And we'll give you an update during and after. See you later. Bye. Okay, here we go.
Here we go. First shots. Okay, stop. I'll show you your first shot one. Right there. Okay. Where's your first shot? Cool. Dead on. Okay. How's the recoil? It's snappy. That's what they say. Not bad. Yeah, that was your worst shot, and I think you're trying to anticipate the recoil, but look where most of your shots are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I can feel this moving every time I shoot. Um, it, it, it does wiggle. Uh, and I could not keep my thumb like I thought I could. I had to pull it. I think that's when I was having the most difficulty keeping them where I should have been keeping them because I didn't have my thumb up here. Down here, I wasn't getting the control that I'm used to. So with this gun, I'm definitely going to have to have it right up here on the slide. And hopefully not enough to cause a malfunction. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, with this gun, the racking is not that easy. If you do not put, do the push pull, it's pretty tough to pull back. Now that will get easier as time goes by. But yeah, so. I'm try strong hand only. Okay. You're all down zero. Oh. I two can see a little straight line there. Your two worst shots were right here. Okay. And I can see that's just getting used to the gun. I can see when you picked it up, you had to move it around a little bit in your hand. Yeah, to get it in the right spot. Yeah. Support hand only. Okay. Oh, I don't like it. I'm stopping because I got to practice with other stuff. <laughs> We've got the new grips from handle it on it we're gonna see how that works they're a little bit smoother but they are grippy got five rounds And we are back from the range with the Hellcat from Springfield Armory. And notice he has put on the grip, enhanced grip that has the cute little Hellcat. Handle it grips. Handle it grips. Yeah. That's actually the name of the company. Okay. And um, my first impressions in shooting this. Well, today was the second day. Um, yesterday we went with original grips on it and I shot it. And today we put these grips on it and we wanted to see if there was a difference in the feel. And first off, <clears throat> I had difficulties because in my head I was thinking of yesterday and how snappy it was. And I had to get that out of my head. And it, it took me 
about a magazine. Oh, well, no, it wasn't a full magazine. So let's say about eight rounds to actually get that out of my head and just drive the gun and not worry about how snappy it was. Just hold on tight, watch your sight, and keep your elbows straight. And it was, it was fine after that. I had no issues after that. Um, it is a very reliable gun. Um, we didn't have any problems with it at all. Um, yesterday we had a uh, failure for the slide to stay back um, after the last round. And today we didn't have that problem. So maybe it was operator error getting that hand up there too high. Thumb. Or thumb. Yeah, thumb up there too high on the slide. I don't know. But it worked fine today. We put... Um, regular factory rounds through it and also some hand loads didn't have any issues at all uh, the sights again like I said yesterday the sights are excellent they pick up right away you see that red dot immediately and there's no issues um, what was interesting in the targets that we shot um, we tended to shoot kind of in the same areas, general areas, which is a good thing. That means it's very good at its point of aim. It's right there. It's true. The um, one thing that I, I did notice yesterday when I was trying to really, and this is a typical thing for me because my hands are so small. In competition, I have to flip my gun to the side like this in order to hit that mag release. This mag release, because it's made for concealment, is very, very flush. So you cannot hit it back here. You have to be up higher where it bumps out to actually hit it for it to come out. And I noticed that even more today. I was having to either flip it to the side this way or use my left hand to get it because I couldn't do it this way. It's, it, oh, I was able to, but it's a definite- well, look how far down Look how far yeah. down, yeah. You're not choked up I'm not like choked up, I cannot, I just, my my hands are too small. That, um, if I'm where I'm supposed to be, I can't get that leverage. So that is one thing that you have to take into consideration, and that is just an easy fix. You just have to flip it like that. And if you practice it, you get it down, there's no issues there. Another thing that I mentioned yesterday was the um, not be getting, being able to actually hit that slide release. And throughout practicing, it became easier, and of course I can't do it now. <laughs> Let's try again. Yeah, it became easier. You don't have a magazine in it. I don't have and a, yeah, I don't I'm, know if that'll You don't have a loaded magazine yeah, in it. Yeah, because I can't do it with that one. Oh yeah, our little disclaimer, all guns are unloaded. Nothing in it. Nothing in the room, no ammo. Yep, no ammo. Um, yeah, so I think that the, with time, this slide release will become easier. It already has. Yeah, and... Um, you had no problem hitting it at the range. No, I didn't. Yeah, that was no issues there. We could stop the video now and get some dummy rounds if you want to try it. No, that's okay. We don't have to do that. Um, let's see. What kind of difference did those grips make in your field? Those grips, okay, I think you can still see it. These are the new grips on here. Looks all the way around there. And it also is in the front. And this little spot right here is um, that little spot I told you about for your thumb yesterday. That is still the original. That's the difference in the texture. These just feel, the new ones, more comfortable. Um, it's kind of like if you have like your bicycle or motorcycle or whatever grips, if they're really hard plastic versus if there's more of a cushy type grip. It, it just takes a little bit of that snappiness out uh, from hitting your hands so hard. Um, and I think after a while, this might be a little bit gritty on your hand um, if you were shooting it for a while, like in a match or something. 
but um, these I really do like. I think that they really did make a difference in how comfortable it was to shoot. <clears throat> and F, it's well worth, they're under like $20, and oh, here's a... Um, the, we'll put that link in the description. Yeah, and look, you get all these colors to choose from. So if you're a teal person, you can get teal. That's just wrong. Yeah, or if pink. Oh, that's double. <laughs> Any color you want in there, you can have that. Of course, my husband likes that zombie green color, so that's what he picked. He didn't even realize there were other colors. He saw that zombie green and said, forget it. That's what I'm getting. So um, anyway, for you know under $20, it's definitely well worth it to try to see if you like it or not. Um, after we got back from the range, Jim came out with his SIG P938 and said, between the two, which would you like to shoot better? And I really surprised him. I told him the Hellcat. And just the way they're set up here. Now, granted, with the SIG, you can change these grips out, but I've never really liked these grips because they... They just don't, with the extended magazine, here, I'll put this magazine here. That's a flush magazine. Flush, yeah, it's the flush one. It's it's still just not right for me. Um, and it does bump. There is a bump right, you know, so it's a lot thicker through it's here. It's actually thicker than the Hellcat by about a quarter of yeah, an inch. Yeah, yeah, we measured it. Yeah, we measured it with his calipers. And, okay, that's the SIG. And that's the Hellcat. It's like a quarter of an inch thicker. So maybe the Hellcat's thinner. Maybe um, that's what I like about it. Um, they're both going to be snappy because they're small guns. And they're light. And they are light. This one's a tad bit heavier, but um, they still do snap quite a bit. And I can shoot both of them equally well, so it has nothing to do with how well I shoot it. It's just the comfort level. Um, which would translate if you really had to use it yeah you're going to feel more comfortable I would with feel the gun you can, exactly. it's more comfortable for you right yeah and uh, the best way I can describe the difference between these two this is deep concealment this one especially with thinner grips would be super deep concealment but then you're giving up round capacity mm -hmm. this is 6 plus 1 or 7 plus 1 depending on what magazine you want to use the Hellcat's 11 plus 1 or 13 or plus 13, 1 13 yeah yeah and, for a gun that as they sit right now the Hellcat's thinner mm -hmm. in the grip area and I'm also noticing the Hellcat has a lot less um, items sticking up because here you've got your safety that sticks up just a little bit you've got your slide uh, release that sticks up a little bit um, yeah and this is uh, it's it is kind of an apple to oranges comparison because they're two is. different platforms Totally. And this would be more fair to be compared against the SIG 365, which we're going to try and do a shootout between the two of them with a couple of the girls. Yeah, to see. And see which, you know, what, just the impressions Yeah. you come up with. To see them. There is no right or wrong answer. It's what works best for you. That's right. And that's what it is. I am. Some people might, you know, just totally be in love with this gun. And then some people just might not like it at all they might for hate whatever. It. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, and that's why it is so nice to be able to go to a range and rent guns and try them because there are so many and I don't know if I've mentioned this in my previous videos but the very first time I went and looked at a gun in a gun store the gentleman behind the counter told me take a little notebook with you and each time you try again whether it be just in a store holding on to it and dry firing it or actually shooting it on a range write down where it was the date and what you thought about it um, that reminds me you got to update your book with the Hellcat I do I haven't done that yet I haven't written anything on the Hellcat uh, and that has helped me so much because I can go back and look, ooh, this is what I thought about this gun, let's say, a year ago. And I can go back and think, well, let me see if my, because I'm shooting differently and better now, let's see if my opinions have changed. And sometimes they do. And then sometimes I'm able to figure out why it doesn't work right for me. There was one gun that I tried out 
where the actual um, safety has a bump on it. Oh, that was the SIGs. Yeah, the, the full-size SIGs. 1911s. They, they have a bump here. The memory bump has a weird a we, and shape it does, on the grip safety. Right into the, yeah, and that's why I couldn't shoot it before. But when I first tried them out, when I was a new shooter, I had no idea why I wasn't able to shoot it. And it was because that was uncomfortable and it kept hitting me. So having notes like that is a very, very good thing. And next time you see a grip safety safe, shaped like that, you'll know, no, nah, no yeah. thanks. Yeah, yeah. If I bought that gun, I'd have to change that out immediately. Right, yeah. So um, uh, that's one thing. What would I change out if I got this gun? Um, I don't need to change the sights. They are perfect. Maybe a different color because they, you know, you can get different color fiber optics. We usually shoot green optics. fiber optics. Yeah. But, you know, that red jumps out really nice. I wouldn't mess with that. Like I said, this grip, extra grip tape here works really awesome. Um, now, the little trigger does have a little long reset. I think we um, touched on that yesterday. It's not too bad. I think that that's good for a beginning shooter and somebody who isn't competing and that that makes sure that they're sure of their second shot um, instead of one that's got a really light trigger that you can just go boom, 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 boom. And a and, quick reset. And a quick reset, yeah. Um, but me personally, I might change that. Um, to get a faster reset? To get a faster reset, yeah. Because it's, it's, as I said yesterday, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, oh, there it is. So it... Yeah, it does take a while to get there. Um, other than that, I do not see anything um, that I would change. You know, that says a lot. Yeah, that does because I'm pretty picky. But um, so yeah. overall, okay, a gun you'd probably carry a lot and not shoot a whole lot right now, just because it's so snappy. Yeah, yeah, but. I would. I know in my mind that I would need to take it out to the range and shoot and practice with it a lot to have that feeling wear off. So you'd have to practice that with that more than say a full size steel 1911. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Because those are so easy to shoot. Right. And that's the same thing with my um, Smith and Wesson 360 PD. Um, it's a little revolver and it's got a little kick on it and. Um, it's not fun to shoot, but if I want to use it in self-defense, I know that I need to be comfortable enough with it to not think, oh man, it's going to hurt if I try and shoot this bad guy. Um, you got to be comfortable with it and know that, okay, I can pick this up, I can shoot it, and I can hit the target that I'm Because you're also at. responsible for reaching bullet goes, and as exactly. Clint Smith said, there's a lawyer attached to every bullet. That's right, there is, and... Uh, Okay, yeah. so Springfield Army Hellcat, did they hit it out of the park? I think they did. I really think they did. I think they did a good job. Um, it isn't It isn't too heavy. I think a, a female would um, definitely benefit by um, just trying this out and seeing if it was. And you can always get some factory reduced recoil rounds. Yes, yeah. You can always, always get stuff that isn't going to be as poppy. And just keep in mind, when you do try it out, it's going to be a little snappy for you. And because it's only a three-inch barrel, it's pretty loud. Yeah. And Use good hearing protection. It is. And, and it doesn't, when I say snappy, I don't want to say it, it hurts. It doesn't hurt if you're holding on tight. It doesn't hurt. It's just got a lot of snap to it. Flip. It flip. And you'll see that in the videos. Now, you'll, you'll also see in the video that... Um, I'm shooting it with my support hand just to see what it's like and I think I put two rounds through it and said nope I gotta stop it's starting to hurt and um, that's because I'm not used to shooting this gun support hand and I also knew that I had to train with my Rhino later on in our little range time session and I didn't want... You had to do some more support hand training that day. Exactly. And I didn't want that to interfere. Well, that's called being wise. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to shoot a 50 Action Express. 
to my hands are hurting so bad I can't hold anything. And then I'm going to shoot my 45. That's not going to work. No, Same no. Idea. Yeah, you you got to think, plan out your training schedule. Um, so I could, you know, with practice, definitely shoot the support you hand. You have no problem with strong hand. No. Your right handed, no, you had no problem that, shooting right hand only. Yeah, yeah. It was the, the left hand that I had issues with, and that's just because I'm not used to shooting left handed that much. That's something that we're definitely practicing on. But no, I had no issue at all. Because it, it fit right in there, and I could feel it. It felt good to hold on to, and it was a good size for my hand. And so someone that has a little larger hands, it might even be better for them. They can, might be able to control that a lot better. So anyway, I guess that's my impressions. All right. So, okay. Springfield Army did a good job. Yes, they did. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.